Hello and welcome to one of my pre-PTR Heroic Ice Crown Citadel boss guides, where I've gone through and looked over old YouTube VODs, online forums, and WoWhead pages to try and produce a modern, up-to-date boss guide with as much relevant information as possible. I'll try to present each encounter in the most straightforward way that is applicable to everyone, then leave the discussion of boss mechanics, assignments, and logic for later in the video. Now before we get started, if you'd like to see more WoW content or want to help my channel grow, consider dropping a like, subscribing, and sharing this video with a friend. It really helps me out, and I appreciate the support. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and enjoy the video. Professor Putricide is a three-phase encounter, and the final fight in the Plague Quarters. You will need 2-3 tanks, 5 healers, and the rest DPS. This encounter is notably more difficult than previous bosses, and is often considered to be the mid-raid wall within ICC. Given the complexity of this fight, I'm going to structure the video in the following manner. We'll first give a brief rundown of the normal version of this fight. We'll then run through the encounter once more, this time discussing strategy and the boss's mechanics in more detail. Then, we'll run through the encounter for a final time as it would be done on the heroic version, discussing strategy and deviations from the normal mode of this fight. Lastly, I do want to preface this guide by saying there are many ways of doing this fight, and of all the guides I've made so far, I am the least confident the strategies I discuss in this video will stay relevant heading into the launch of ICC. That said, I hope I'm able to share some insights that will better enable raid teams to clear this encounter. So let's get started. In Phase 1, have an off-tank pilot the Abomination. They will be responsible for slowing adds and clearing the Room of Slime. Beginning with the green side, adds spawn from green and orange tanks. DPS must focus down the adds. The green ad will fixate and ensnare its target. Range players must stack on the target of the green ad. The orange ad will fixate but it won't ensnare its target, and it must be kited until killed. Only DPS Professor Putricide when no adds are up. When the boss nears 80% health, slow DPS and kill any newly spawning adds. Once all adds are dead, push the boss to 80% health to enter Phase 2. In Phase 2, you will continue your ad management from Phase 1. The new mechanics this phase are in the form of choking gas bombs, which melee players need to dodge, and malleable goo which range players need to dodge. When the boss nears 35% health, slow DPS, clear any remaining adds, then push the boss to 35% to enter Phase 3. In Phase 3, the Abomination will disappear, freeing up the off tank. This means slime pools can no longer be cleared. Adds will no longer spawn, but choking gas and malleable goo remain. This point of the fight is a DPS race. Press Bloodlust and burn the boss. Putricide will now apply Mutated Plague to the active tank. This is a stacking debuff that deals raid damage and acts as a soft enrage. Have tanks taunt off each other to keep these debuff stacks as low as possible. Avoid hazards and kill the boss. Now let's break down the normal mode of this fight in further detail. Phase 1 is all about ad management. It's essential to kill each ad before the next one spawns. Damage on future side should only be prioritized when no ads are up. So what do these ads do? When the green ad or volatile ooze spawns in, it will fixate on a random player, applying a volatile ooze adhesive, a dot that ensnares its target. If it reaches its target, it will explode in an ooze eruption, knocking players back and dealing massive raid-wide damage that is split among nearby players. So if you aren't able to kill off the green ad before it reaches its target, be sure to stack on that target to mitigate the damage dealt. After the knockback, it will ensnare and fixate a new target repeating this process until killed. When the orange ad, or gas cloud, spawns in, it similarly fixates and applies a dot on a random player, this time in the form of gaseous bloat. Unlike the green ad, it doesn't ensnare its target. This debuff is applied with 10 stacks and deals heavy upfront damage that drops off or loses stacks over time. Upon reaching 0 stacks of the debuff, the orange ad will fixate on a new target and repeat this process until killed. If the orange ad reaches its target, it will deal massive raid-wide damage. The exact amount of damage depends on how many stacks of gaseous bloat the target has at the time they've been caught. However, this damage does not split between raiders, making the orange ad much more dangerous than the green ad. In other words, you never want the orange ad to reach its target. If it does, your raid will likely wipe. Aside from the ad spawning, in Phase 1, Professor Putricide will also throw vials of mutated slime at a target's location spawning puddles of green goo that will continuously grow. 
These puddles are the responsibility of the off tank that will be piloting the abomination. Have your off tank drink a potion off Professor Putricide's table at the start of the encounter. The abomination has three abilities. The first of which being eat ooze. The abomination will quite literally eat the slime, decreasing its size and giving you four energy. The abomination needs this energy to use their second ability, regurgitated ooze. This ability applies a dot that slows the target's movement speed by 50%. It's imperative this dot is applied whenever a new ad spawns. The Abomination's final ability, then, is Mutated Slash, which deals weapon damage and reduces the target's resistance to physical damage by 4%, stacking up to 5 times. This is your filler ability when you aren't gathering goo or slowing adds. However, it is important to maintain 5 stacks of this debuff on the boss. Note that as of patch 3.3.3, this debuff did not stack with Sunder Armor. Moving on, there are two common positioning strategies for handling Phase 1 in Normal. The first strategy, we'll call the Big Move Strat, is to have a tank pick up Putricide and position him near the orange tank, with range DPS and healers spread in the following manner. This way, when the green ad spawns, it will fixate on a random player far away from its spawn point. When this happens, all DPS players should swap off Putricide and onto the ad. The goal is to kill it before it reaches its target. However, if your raid isn't going to deal enough damage to achieve this, have all DPS players stack on the fixated target to split the damage dealt by Ooze Explosion. Once the green ad has been killed, the tank will then drag Putricide over to the green tank, and the entire raid will move to the other side in preparation for when the orange ad spawns. Again, this way the target it fixates will be far away, giving players time to kill the ad before it reaches its target. If your raid is unable to kill the orange ad before the fixated target's debuff expires, make sure melee players scatter while the orange ad fixates on a new target. The boss should transition to phase 2 at 80% health before the third ad spawns. Note that on normal, it's very possible your raid will have enough damage to push the boss into phase 2 before the second ad spawns. Some raid teams may even be able to push the boss before the first ad spawns, but during prog, I would advise only pushing the boss to a new phase after an ad has been killed. So if you're cutting the DPS check close, it's infinitely better to slow damage and kill an ad before phasing the boss. The second strategy, we'll call it the little move strat, has the tank drag Putricide to where the green ad will spawn with a range and healers spread in the following manner. The idea here is that this strategy allows for better uptime with less movement. By being close to the green ad when it spawns, melee can immediately swap to the ad and still cleave the boss. If a melee player gets fixated, the green ad will immediately explode, but because all melee players and pets are already at or near the green ad, the ooze explosion damage should be split among enough players to be livable. Expecting a knockback, melee should position themselves between the ranged and the ad. This way, when they're knocked back, if they're pursued again, ranged DPS won't need to move and will have better uptime. Once the green ad has been killed and the orange ad spawns, the raid is already in a favorable position to kite the orange ad maybe excluding a few ranged DPS that should move further from the orange tank. Note that the tank with Putricide will occasionally need to move away from Slime on the ground. Try to move back and forth between these two locations. Similar to the big move strat, the raid should phase the boss before the third ad spawns, and may even phase sooner. Just be sure to phase after killing an ad. Once the boss reaches 80% health, Professor Putricide will enter a phase transition, using tear gas on the raid and stunning players for its duration. After 10 seconds, Phase 2 will begin. In Phase 2, all the same mechanics from Phase 1 will persist, and your raid will continue utilizing one of the big or little move strats. The two new mechanics Professor Putricide gains access to this phase are Choking Gas Bomb and Malleable Goo. Choking Gas Bomb will leave a gas cloud that deals damage to players in it, and explodes after 20 seconds. Players that run through the cloud will also gain a dot, reducing their hit chance by 75% for 10 seconds. This mechanic will be used in melee range, spawning two clouds near the boss. The two gas bombs generally spawn to the left and right of the boss, slightly behind him. Knowing this, the putricide tank should bait these gas bombs to spawn somewhere that won't be in the raid's way. A good place being the edge of the room, which is done by dragging the boss to the side of the room with his back facing the wall. This is especially useful to free up space in the room, and prevent players from being knocked back by a green ad into a gas cloud. The other ability Putricide gains access to is Malleable Goo. This mechanic is identical to the Malleable Goo used in the heroic Fessor Gut encounter. In 25-man, the boss will throw two balls of goo at random ranged players. 
Ranged players must move out of the blast radius, otherwise they will take large AoE damage and have their casting and attack speed slowed. This mechanic doesn't change the strategy for the fight, it's just something your ranged players will need to look out for. Just like at the end of phase 1, when Putricide nears 35% health, slow DPS and kill any newly spawning ad sets before pushing the boss into phase 3. Have DPS players hold cooldowns to be used during the next phase. Professor Putricide will once more enter his phase transition, using tear gas on the raid. After 10 seconds, he will then enter phase 3. In phase 3, all previous mechanics persist, but adds stop spawning and the off tank can no longer pilot the abomination. This phase is a DPS race. Press Bloodlust and blow every cooldown to kill the boss as fast as possible. The absence of an abomination means slime can no longer be removed, and your raid will have limited space to maneuver. This is one of the soft and rage mechanics for the phase, and determines our positioning. The active tank will slowly move in a circle around the edge of the room, moving with the spawn of new slime pools and gas bombs. Ranged and healers will be positioned towards the center of the room, similarly moving with the spawn of new slime pools and avoiding malleable goo. During this phase, the active tank will take stacks of Mutated Plague. This ability is the other soft and rage mechanic for the phase. Each stack of Mutated Plague will deal damage to the raid, scaling multiplicatively. Above 4-5 to five stacks, the encounter becomes unhealable and the raid will wipe. Note that clearing stacks through immunities or death is not an option, because any players that die or have their stacks of Mutated Plague removed will heal Putricide for a significant amount. To survive as long as possible, your tanks should taunt off each other to keep stacks between them as low as possible. One example is to have the main tank take 2 stacks, the off tank then taunts and takes 2 stacks, then for each preceding stack applied, your tanks will alternate taunting the boss. If your raid is finding this DPS check to be too demanding, such that you are unable to kill the boss before Mutated Plague wipes your raid, it may be advisable to run a third tank. While decreasing your raid's damage output, running three tanks prolongs the debuff from reaching higher stacks. Alternately, it's possible to have melee DPS players briefly taunt the boss with defensive cooldowns to eat a stack. For example, a DPS warrior with shield wall should be able to tank the boss and eat a stack of Mutated Plague without dying. Whatever the decision, burn the boss before Mutated Plague stacks become unmanageable, and normal Professor Putricide will go down. Finally then, we move on to Heroic. In Phase 1, and for the remainder of this fight, the Heroic version of this encounter introduces Unbound Plague. This dot is applied to a random player. It lasts 60 seconds, deals increasing damage per second, and will jump to anyone within 3 yards, resetting its damage when it jumps. If left on one target, this dot will eventually deal so much damage that it becomes unhealable and kills its target. To avoid this, players targeted by this ability must run to a nearby player and pass it on before the dot kills them. The catch is that once passed on, the former player then gains Plague Sickness, increasing their damage taken from Unbound Plague by a significant amount. This debuff stacks and lasts for a minute. This means two players can't just pass between them for the duration of the debuff. Otherwise, the rest of Phase 1 proceeds the same as normal. So with Unbound Plague in the mix, there are two options for how we'll handle Phase 1, both of which are based on the little move strat we discussed previously. The first strategy, and the most simple one, we'll call it the YOLO strat, is to just free-for-all the management of Unbound Plague, but communicate the following rules. If a melee player has Unbound Plague, pass it off to a ranged player. This could be either a DPS or a healer. If a ranged player has Unbound Plague without Plague Sickness, hold it for about 8 seconds or as long as you feel safe before passing it on to another player. If a ranged player has Unbound Plague with Plague Sickness, immediately pass it off. The idea here is that by following these rules, the raid can limit the damage done by Unbound Plague, enough to the point where it's manageable and the raid doesn't need to plan a whole new strategy around it, thus freeing up brain space to think about other happenings. An alternative strategy, we'll call it the Quarantine Strat, is to assign ranged players as Plague Holders, and plan around moving Unbound Plague to these same players for each new dot. These players will stand in their own section of the room and pass it off between each other until it expires. There could be as many as 6 players to as few as 3 players in this space. Ultimately that decision falls to the raid lead. The benefit to this strat is that the damage dealt by Unbound Plague becomes predictable, and generally deals less damage than that of the YOLO strat. The raid lead can assign tanky range players and utilize externals so they can reliably hold the dot longer than the average player. The downside to the strat is that the rest of the raid needs to play around this space not being available. 
Melee need to ensure they aren't being knocked back by the green slime into the zone, and players cutting the orange adds need to avoid the space. So, with the application of a new Unbound Plague, there are a few different possibilities. Firstly, if a melee player gets the debuff, they should immediately run out and transfer the dot to a player in the Plague Zone, or drop it off at a ranged player partway there. Secondly, if a ranged player outside of the zone gets the dot, they can sit on it for a short while before transferring it to a player in the Plague Zone. Thirdly, if somebody in the Plague Zone gets the debuff, that's the best case scenario and everyone lives happily ever after. Now, whether it's the YOLO or the Quarantine strat, the same rules apply when transitioning into Phase 2. We want to delay pushing the boss until after an ad dies to avoid phasing the boss while an ad is up. That said, and I've seen conflicting information regarding this point, but on private servers, a strategy that was utilized involved killing the green ad, then slowing DPS when Putricide would near 81% health. Then, when Putricide casts Unstable Experiment, meaning he's about to spawn a new ad, push the boss to 80% to force phase 2. This is done because of another difference in Heroic. When the boss is pushed into a new phase, he will no longer stun the ray with tear gas, but instead will spawn both an orange and greed ad at the same time. If done correctly, by pushing the boss during this cast, the orange ad that spawns will count as a transition ad, so the raid will have to deal with two ads as per usual, but the next ad that spawns during phase 2 will be a green one, which is the easier of the two ads to deal with. We'll have to wait for a PTR to see whether or not this tech will work. If it doesn't work, just push the boss into phase 2 after all ads are dead. As mentioned, in Heroic, the boss now spawns two ads at the same time during a phase transition. Putricide will also randomly apply one of the two following debuffs. These debuffs make it so that you may only damage one of the adds. These transitions are arguably the most difficult parts of the fight. It's a good idea for DPS players to hold cooldowns for this phase transition. Your Abomination tank likely won't be able to slow both the green and orange adds simultaneously, so prioritize slowing the more lethal add, and players should actively try to stack on the target of the green slime to mitigate the damage dealt once it reaches its target and explodes. If you can DPS through the slimes, Phase 2 is identical to Phase 1, but now with the addition of the Phase 2 mechanics Choking Gas Bomb and Malleable Goo. The strategy for this phase from Phase 1 remains unchanged. Melee DPS and the Putricide tank need to be mindful of Choking Gas Bomb, and Rage players should move out of the Blast Radius when targeted by Malleable Goo. When the boss nears 35% health, hold cooldowns and finish off any remaining adds. Once all adds are dead, phase the boss. Just like the Phase 1 transition, Professor Putricide will spawn two adds and apply gas and ooze variable to the raid. Slam cooldowns, use bloodlust, and blast the adds. Depending on your raid's level of comfort, ability, and gear, it may make sense to hold cooldowns and bloodlust for after the slimes are dead. Phase 3 is still a DPS race. Regardless, Phase 3 in Heroic proceeds the same as the normal version, this time with Unbound Plague running rampant. Because this final phase will force the entire raid to move, it can be tricky trying to maintain a designated Unbound Plague area, and the brainpower it would take to correctly navigate this is not worth the potential loss in DPS. Mutated Plague is infinitely more threatening of a mechanic at this point in the fight, so if you haven't been already, have the entire raid run the Yellow Strat and just blast the boss. Kill the boss before your tanks flop, and that's the fight. If you stuck around to this point, thanks for watching. This was admittedly a longer video due to the sheer amount of variation in strategies that can hypothetically be utilized. Whether or not you implement some of the strategies discussed, I hope there's something in here that's helpful that you can take away from this video. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.